Welcome to another lecture session on thermodynamics. So in this lecture session, we are going to discuss what is thermodynamics, what is a thermodynamical state, what are state variables, what are the different types of thermodynamic systems. Then we'll briefly discuss, just introduce what are reversible and irreversible processes. And then we'll talk about thermodynamic equilibrium and uh, how you define a equilibrium system as opposed to a non-equilibrium system. Thermodynamics is the branch of science that deals with energy levels and the transfer of energy between systems or between different states of systems. So then question comes, what's a state? A state is defined by some energy content of a given system and generally a state is specified by giving some values related to something called state variables and such variables could be temperature, pressure, volume, number of particle, density, number of different types of particle, stress, length, area and so forth. So these are state variables. So a state is expressed in terms of these state variables. Now, a, given a state of a system, these different types of state variables can be classified into mainly two categories, something called extensive state variables and intensive state variables. So here they are. So variables which are proportional to the quantity of matter, such as a volume, number of particle, right? So these are the extensive variable. So to understand this, let's say you have two glasses of water, not completely full, they are half, half filled. So then you would say that I have two systems and if the temperature in your room is equilibrated means it's just one constant temperature. So if you have a open room, so it would have a normal temperature like say 25 or 30 degrees centigrade. So your system, the gla two glasses of water would also be having around same temperature. And then what you did? you just poured one glass of water into the other. So now you have a completely filled one glass of water. So now you converted a two system system into a one single system. In that case, the temperature of the system means temperature of the glass of water would not change, but the volume of the glass of water would change. So that's how you say that when you add or subtract a part of a system, then something some things change, like number of particle would change. If you add something, number of particle increases. If you subtract some part of the system, number of particle decreases. So number of particle, volume, these are entropy, these are extensive variables. So what are int intrinsic variables? those variables which do not change. For example, in, in, in our two glass example, the temperature doesn't change, the concentration would not change, density would not change, the pressure in the system would not change, means within the glass of water, whatever the pressure is, that is not going to change. So these are in intrinsic variables, right? So next, what is the system? We didn't define that. The system, the part of the universe that is under your consideration, whatever it is. In our case, we were thinking about two glasses of water. So that's your system. Let's say you are talking about a, a, a piece of iron. What's its temperature? Is it, and right now at that moment, it's para, ferromagnetic state or a paramagnetic state or something like that. Then that piece of iron is your system. So system can also have its subcategories. 
and in thermodynamics we define three different types of systems one is called open system closed system isolated system so in a open system both energy and matter can be exchanged with its environment so every system is existing in some other environment which is surrounding the system right so there is an interface which is separating the system from the environment so then if the matter and energy can be exchanged between the system and the environment then that's a open system a closed system when only energy transfer is or energy exchange of energy is possible then you have a closed system so in a closed system no matter is allowed to exchange with the environment an isolated system the energy and the matter both of them are not allowed to be exchanged with the environment so that's an isolated system right so for example a glass of water which is just placed in front of you on your table with nothing no lead over it so that's an open system some of the water molecule can just evaporate and go into the environment so that's how it's losing its energy uh, losing its mass some of the particles are gone and then it's also exchanging energy with the environment so that's an open system but then let's say you 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 poured that glass of water into a flask and you closed its um, lead so that has now become a closed system no matter is allowed to go out but then if the flask is such that you know it's 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 a it allows energy to transfer through its surfaces then it's a closed system only but if you take a flask which is we call a thermal glass or a thermal flask means if you if you if you, if you put some water into it its temperature do not change like if you are trying to take some water hot water to your office so in that case you take a thermo flask and the temperature doesn't temperature remains same for a long long time so so in that case it's a it's a very close to an isolated system no water is spilling out no energy is also losing so that's an isolated example very close to and not a perfect you can never make a perfectly isolated system so that's just a question of practicality but in theory you can define these three different types of systems right then given a system it can remain in its own state or it can evolve to some other state right so in that way you need a process so there are different types of processes some process could be a diabetic in that case no exchange of energy has taken place between the system and its environment so that's an adiabatic process isobaric process the change has occurred under constant pressure so like you have got a glass of water right from your fridge so it's a very low temperature let's say it's at uh, you know five degrees centigrades so it's it's still a liquid water but then you have placed it over your table just on your table and then after some time you find that its temperature is now next or very close to the room temperature then that's a process and that process undergone under the atmospheric pressure so the pressure is constant so that's an isobaric process in this way you can have isochronic process isothermal process isothermal means at a constant temperature a process is going on at a constant pressure everything else can change so these are different types of processes right so then we can talk about something called equilibrium or reversible processes so during these processes the system can undergo changes one reversively or irreversibly and then the most important distinction between reversible and irreversible process is that in case of a reversible process the process goes ahead very 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 slowly 
in irreversible process the process is very fast then in case of irreversible process there will be some loss of energy so non-conservative forces will be involved like friction viscous force so this type of when a system is changing and in that case there are some dissipating forces involved which takes away the energy out of the system and you can never get it back so those processes will be irreversible process so first it has to be occurring very very fast and then the it has to also involve some dissipative forces during the uh, during the change during the process then it's in going to be an irreversible process so what is an equilibrium process or an equilibrium state not a process so during a process if it happens that the 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 change in the system is not only happening in the forward direction but also there is a change in the system in the reverse direction or or there is a tendency in the system that restores its change so if both these two processes are going on simultaneously then that state would be called an equilibrium state right so in case of a reversible process we said that the process has to go ahead very very slowly and that's where the equilibrium process or equilibrium state comes why very very slowly the process is going on in such a way that at that at every step the system remains at equilibrium that means it is moving ahead coming back moving ahead both those two tendencies are are there within the system so in other words now you can redefine the reversible processes like this that a process where at each step the system is at equilibrium with its surrounding right so you have different types of processes like what are the external conditions and then how exactly the process is happening in that way also you can have different processes reversible irreversible processes then in terms of the equilibrium state you have generally two types of equilibrium one is called stable equilibrium another is called metastable equilibrium in case of a stable equilibrium what happens is that given the state of the system if you give a little perturbation means you change the system a little bit then the system has the ability to come back to its original position or original state so that's in stable equilibrium an unstable equilibrium is a state where if you give a little bit of perturbation change the system a little bit then it just the change goes ahead and it continues it doesn't come back to its original position original state so that's an unstable equilibrium for example something like this this is uh, th these the such figures are called energy landscape right so there is like one in this direction x axis horizontal axis let's say there is some variable some state variable for a given system and along this direction it's this energy that's a energy landscape that's in one dimensional landscape if you like you can have a two dimensional landscape where the system's energy is dependent on two different variables simultaneously so anyway so in in such a case if the system's energy is such that it's it's corresponding to this point then the system would be in a unstable equilibrium so if you let the system be in its own state at this position then it's not going to change its state but if you give a little bit of nudge you change the system a little bit give a perturbation small perturbation then either the system will change in such a way that its energy decreases decreases and it just goes on and it never it can never by itself come back to its original place or if it is moving in this way again it will not come back by its own right so that's an unstable equilibrium here that's a metastable equilibrium saying that there are other equilibrium 
states where its energy is less than this. So this is a stable equilibrium or a global equilibrium, right? So for this system which has this energy landscape like this, then this corresponds to a stable equilibrium, right? So then there is one word in, in thermodynamics, you would see it again and again, thermodynamic equilibrium. In a thermodynamic equilibrium, the system remains in equilibrium in three different ways. So when the system is in thermal equilibrium, in that case, what happens? What is a thermal equilibrium? A system will be called it's in a thermal equilibrium when throughout the system, the temperature is same. A system, if it is also in a chemical equilibrium, that means the distribution of the chemical species. In our case, let's say we have a system where the molecules are changing, right? Let's say hydrogen and oxygen are reacting and giving you water. So that's kind of system. So if this process of changing hydrogen and oxygen and becoming water molecule, it's going on in one direction only. So what will happen? Right now, if there are 100 hydrogen and 100 oxygen molecule, after some time, you'll have less numbers of hydrogen and oxygen molecules and more numbers of water molecules. So that's how the composition is changing. But if it happens that you have attained such a state where some of the water molecules are also breaking up, so that's the backward process. So in that case, what will happen that at some, at some, you know, rate of change, it may happen that even if you wait for a long time, you would see that at every stay, the number of hydrogen and oxygen molecule throughout the system remains constant. Because some are converted into water, but water is still again getting breakdown into its comp you know, components. So that kind of system would be called in, in chemical equilibrium. The number of species is same and the number of part, you know, particles for a particular species is still also remains same. So in other words, you have a chemical equilibrium. So a system which is in thermal equilibrium and chemical equilibrium and then also in mechanical equilibrium you call that system is in thermodynamic equilibrium. What is mechanical equilibrium? A system where there is no extra stress or pressure within the system. It's not that you, given the system, here is a you know place where temp pressure is more than the other part of the system. If that is not the case, throughout the system, the pressure everywhere is uniform, then you would say that it's a mechanical, mechanical equilibrium. So if these three conditions are satisfied, then you call that system to be in thermodynamic equilibrium. So this ends our first part of this thermodynamics lecture series. Thank you. Mm -hmm.